Hi darlings, I hope you're all alright and keeping safe and taking care of yourselves. Back for another react and this time our food is up with the lark. She is, yeah, instead of being up with a night owl. She's up, not really alert and she's having a breakfast. She's going to have a little chat with us all. We're all going to, you know, have a little discussion, a little uh, life update. So um, let's get to it now. Before we do... Can I just say very quickly, I'm getting a bit, you know, a bit previous here. Um, I'd just like to say thank you to all my new subscribers and to the subscribers that have been with me for a long time. This channel's growing slowly but surely. I'm the tortoise, not the hare for definite, but we're getting there bit by bit. My first goal, of course, is to get to a thousand. And with all of your help, I'm getting there bit by bit like I said and it's wonderful you know all the thumbsy ups and all the fabulous comments and you know you really cheer me up and you know when I come home from work and it's particularly if it's been a hard day you read the comments and it just well it gives you a boost I never ever thought for one minute I'd ever have a hundred subscribers never mind over 500 and it's just well it's gobsmacking, it really is. I mean, not enough to shut me up, like. Not even the finger of God could do that. But for all of you that are subscribed to me, if you could do one more thing for me, I'd be ever so grateful. I really, really would. I'll get all of your addresses and send you a box of Ferrero Rocher. How's that? Could you all share me and like me and put me on your social medias, medias on your Facebooks and your Twitters and your Instagrams and say, look, look, if you're feeling down, friends, family, there's this mad woman in England and you watch a few of her videos and you won't feel so bad about yourself because she's absolutely off her rocker. Try that, you know, the emotional blackmails. If not, get a bit vicious and say, listen. Listen, cousin-in-law, mother-in-law, friend that lives down the street with a new conservatory. If you don't subscribe to my mate Lou Trill, I'll punch your head in. Anyway, now that's over. <laughs> no, seriously, thank you ever so much. Each and every one of you, you make me day. You really do. You really make me day. And you're really helping me with my mental health. I've got to tell you that because how can I be depressed and down when I've got all these lovely comments and lovely people that take time out of their very important days to watch me make an arse of myself most of the time. Anyway, let's get on with it. You know, we're getting a bit sentimental here. We should be full of vim and vigour and ready to tackle our foodie beauty. Let's see what she's up to. Oh God, here she is. Look at the mess. Oh my God. Oh Saints preserve us. Look at her. Sat there. She's like a pilot, isn't she? A pilot in the cockpit of the shit old express. Where are we going tonight? Hello. My shirt matches my hair peak. Mm. Nice. Oh, what the hell? The fuck is that? I've got no idea, love. Some kind of fruit something or other. Oh, my God. You want to be careful of that. You're allergic to healthy. What the hell was that? Have you been doing a bobbit? Have you been chopping off winky woos? Where did that come from? Oh, my God. She's a serial cock killer. <laughs> oh, dear. Do you know, I make myself laugh. <laughs> but it's it's gone off nanas, isn't it, you bloody... You are nanas. You're gone off and all you better put yourself in that black bin line. I'm just going to clean up a little tiny bit before I eat. Because I'm grossed out by myself. You're grossed out. I'm bloody grossed out by you. You dirty Mary. Jesus Christ. It's like a landfill. So, just Where are you going to start? Bear with you. Bear with you. How long have we got to bear with you? 24 hours? A week? 
Jesus, look at it. Look at her picking through it. You know what it reminds me of? What were those kids called? It's Victorian times, London. And they used to go, when the tide had gone out, because you know the Thames is a estuary. When the tide had gone out, and the, well, beach, it's more like stinky, sloppy, filthy mud. When that had gone, when that was um, exposed, they used to go down there picking up bits and pieces, anything that they could sell for a few coppers. What were they called? Was it the nightingales? No, it's it's not beachcombers. Beachcombers is civilised. You do that on nice beaches. No, this was the shit old Thames. Um, I'm sure they were called the nightingales. She's like that, picking through the debris. Jesus. Oh, that you don't blow your nose off. Look, foodie, none of us have got the strength for this. You haven't, we haven't got the strength to watch it. Why don't you just pull the pin on a nice grenade? I'm sure you can get one on eBay. Dark side of the web, somewhere like that. Walk out the room and shut the door behind you. Put that poor bedroom out of its misery. Look, I was waiting to go live. Mm. Um, but what I didn't happened, want to press play or live until I stopped sneezing. Oh my god! Right, because sneezing is a great sneeze. embarrassment, isn't it? So you won't, <laughs> you won't turn the on switch on when you're sneezing because that's, you know, an outrageous thing to do on camera. But you'll sit in that bloody squalor, like Digger the bloody dump. You're having me on. You really are. Yuck. Oh, my God. I'm going to be recording some... Oh, another one. Cleaning and packing. Ah, uh, yeah. Hope you've got a wide lens. Oh. Yeah. Stay tuned for that. I will. I can't wait. I hope you're going to have a couple of energy drinks because you're going to need the um, you can you're going to need the vim and vigor to tackle that room. Look, Pap. Why don't you just get the number of Kim and Aggie? You know them two women. One was Scottish. One was English. Big gal like me, my physique with a, a pompadour, a blonde hairdo. About ten ton of bloody hairspray on it. Face like a smacked arse. She had an aura of a very well-groomed vinegar tit. You know the uh, prison guard of Prisoner Cell Block H. Why don't you ring them two gals that used to do that programme when they'd go into people's houses that lived like you do and they'd clean them all up. Get their number. It'd give you uh, an opportunity for fame as well, wouldn't you? Because you'd be on the telly. If not, why don't you ring the SAS? They could use your house as practice. They've got flamethrowers they have, you know. We have a new... We have a new arc in the villa. Do we? Lovely. Supposedly coming up, hopefully. Mm. Is that your new sorting regime? Sniff it. If it smells all right, shelve it. Don't smell peats, will you? Gladys will be on the shelf, all squished up next to your little mini fridge. This mansion situation? Yes. What about it, lovey? Are we moving in um, or not? Wait, sir, what is it you want to know? Updates. What's going on with it? Come on, a spill the beans. Fry could stab you in the eye. Mm -hmm. Could also attract cockroaches. Oh my god. 
Sorry, Carry listen, you don't know me. And the dinner gong. It's time for yum yums. How do I not have a single plastic fork here? <gasps> How do you not have any cutlery? You're 38 years old and you haven't got a cutlery drawer. I mean, I'm sure you've got drawers. And I'm on about cupboards and kitchens, not what you contain your flange in. How come you haven't got cutlery? You can go to Pound... Well, you can't go to Poundland. You live in Canada. But you can go into... Not Dollar Tree, that's in America. What's it called? Canada's version. The Dollarama, is it? Yes, Dollarama. You can go in there and get a set probably for what? Ten, fifteen dollars. Come on, you lazy Mary. Too bloody old to be eating off plastic. Toddlers eat off plastic. Wait, is this clean? Good if it's enough. in your room, no. no. it's not good enough, is it? Why don't you pop to the loo and give it a swish? It's all right, toilet water. It's going in your gob after all. Come on, up, Sir Daisy. Jesus, you need a crane. Oh my God, she hasn't squashed that pussy, has she? Oh my God. Those cats, they're so brave. They need the VC. Oh my God, she's got the cat again. He's probably like roadkill squished amongst all the rubbish and debris. He was a lovely cat. God bless him. She trying to give it the kiss of life, trying to res resurrect it. Bump its tail that might blow some air into it like um a bicycle wheel. Oh the Bang. Okay. So, what? Yes, I fed them already. They have their breakfast downstairs. That's nice. What did they have? McDonald's. What is this? Oh, cottage cheese. For breakfast? What is this? Baked beans. What a combination. Yeah, look. See? Yeah, I know what so beans and beans. cottage cheese look like. Hey, really? That reminds me of a song. Do you remember? Beans, beans are good for your heart. The more you eat, the more you fart. Do you remember that? A trip down memory lane, isn't it? Bank. Sorry, I don't want a nip slip. Nip slip? What are you on about nip slip? Your bleeding nips are on the floor. They're not going to slip anywhere. Although I will say to you, you want to put some corn plasters on them. Protect them, you know, from carpet burn or getting snagged on any of the shit that's on your floor. Hey guys. Hiya kids, you alright? You're looking bright and bushy tailed this morning like a bald bunny. I really feel like fucking eating every part of, of pork. Do you? Well, you're on to a good start then, darling, by the looks of it. Let's get a fork from the kitchen, you beezer. Yeah. You can't do that, can you, darling? It's too far to walk, isn't it, going all the way to your kitchen? I mean, you don't even go near front door, do you? Even when there's foodies behind it, and I mean, not you, food that you eat. Mm. Sausages. Lovely. Hold on. I'm old in here. Come on. That's it. Tidy up as you eat. Good girl. That's very efficient. Might as well combine the pork products. Mmm. Lovely. Oh, God. What the fuck is this? It's called toast. It's bread. You know? The opposite of meat. Toast? Where's the butter? No. Oh. You found it, lovely. Yeah. Whoa, cool. Lovely. So I just thought we would enjoy our breakfast together. Willy Wonka. Breakfast? 
breakfast? What are you on about? Breakfast? That's not breakfast. That's cannibalism. All right, what do you have for breakfast? This is this is nothing shy of an English breakfast, Willie. That's not an English breakfast, not in any language that I know. How very dare you. Take that back right now. No. Don't you agree, mate? No, I don't, mate. Excuse me, Danny Pickles. Look at it, it's like a demolition derby. It doesn't look most appetising, does it? No, it doesn't. Has Nada cooked it? It is good, though. Is it lovely? Does it touch the side for you to taste it? It's hilarious, is not she? I'm suspecting here that you had something else before you had your breakfast. Something that gave you wings. And I don't mean Red Bull. <laughs> Keep your hands above the desk. What are you doing down there? Rootling. Like a pig after tr truffles. <laughs> Get out. Jesus. <laughs> Bacon sounds like Pop Rocks. It does. It's burnt, isn't it? You know, Nada's definitely cooked that, hasn't he? Have him and Dee Dee um, set up one of those, you know, those um, burger vans and they're doing breakfasts. You know why? I asked for it well done. And you bloody got it? Mm. My eggs are over medium. Anyway, I woke up at five. Did you? Oh my God, what happened? Did you read the bed? And have you just put, have you put mustard on that bacon? Oh my God. I, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Shall we all have a little moment of silence for this breakfast? And I've been doing some work. Have you? Oh. Bloody hell, what happened? Did the finger of God come through that window? And bop you on the bloody head. My God, who said miracles don't happen? On the computer. On the computer, lovely. Um, I'm having to face doing some things that I've been putting off. And I just... Have you? God, you're brave. Oh. You should get an award. One of those people's awards. Perhaps Kate Middleton, you know, um, the Princess of Wales. Perhaps she should give you an award for doing it. You know, like a nice gold medal. It'd match that boss necklace of yours. It looked lovely. Torture. So. You've been working hard, have you, kid? I thought. Mm-hmm. You need a little pit stop. Build up your energy again, yes. I have a piece of wheelchair. Mm. Yeah, bad idea. Mm. Now I want to go back to bed for a couple of hours. Um, so it's only a mini miracle then. A very short-lived one. About three seconds. God, what are you taking that bloody stuff? I thought you're supposed to take that of an evening for relaxing and socialising. You're going to be bleeding dead to the world now for the rest of the day. He's just sleeping. Is he? Oh. It's probably all that dashing about he's been doing. Have you had him back and forth to that front door picking up deliveries or something? You've worn him out. Oh. Um. <laughs> God, look at it. Yeah. I'm in my room. We can see that, lovey. At eight forty-six, eating a huge breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Were we, we know. Really, I seem sad. You seem dopey as fuck. But there again, that's because you're as high as a guide, isn't it, darling? You've been nibbling on them wheelchairs. That's it. Wash it down. Oh, yeah, no, I, I'm stoned. My meds don't seem to be working. Do they not? Are you taking them properly? 
Are you really telling me that you're taking medication plus alternative medical resources? Jesus Christ, they can't be working together right. I mean, you're not supposed to take social medication, are you, when you're on proper prescribed mental health medication? My God, your bleeding brain. It'll go bang. I guess they're not a cure-all. No, you need therapy. I haven't been putting in the work either. We, we noticed that, darling. We looked through our lenses. You know, like you look through yours. And we saw that. We cottoned on quite quick. We've been telling you for months. I look depressed. They look shabby. You look mucky. I think I'm just numb, <laughs> mm. honestly. Numb? If anything, probably. I wonder what's causing that. I think I'm suffering from like a case of like... Lazyitis? Idolitis? Can't be arsonist? You know, like, I don't give a shit-itis. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've been reading the same medical dictionary as me, darling. We should work together in a clinic. We'd make millions. Like, I literally right. took, I was up at 5.30. Was yeah. About 5. Heard Pete's turn his lights off. Mm -hmm. Laid in bed. And I was like, am I going to go back to bed? Oh. Only slept for a few hours. Uh -huh. How am I awake this early? I hate this shit. Because you got then, no sleep schedule, <clears throat> darling. BBJ must have noticed I was awake. I hear her come in the room. Mm -hmm. I get up, go feed the cat. Did you hear a cry or is that my chair? Probably the ghost. Yeah, your, your chair's crying out for rescue. I'll go give them uh, chicken stew. Mm-hmm. I go... Wait, where are you going, love? Come back. Where, where's she gone off to now? We're talking to you. Come on, don't be bloody rude. Get back. Sit in that bloody chair and behave yourself. Have your breakfast. Do a, do a bunch of... Uh... She's not with it at all, is she? Should we all have a seance? Should we all hold hands? Should we get the Ouija board out? See if we can contact her. Work on Excel. Mm-hmm. Were you excelling at Excel? I have a lot of stuff that I can do right from my computer. Have you? Yeah, I'm very overwhelmed, actually. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm overwhelmed, and all. We're all bloody overwhelmed. You're mainly overwhelmed by boxes and shit. From what I can see. You need to quit wheelchair, Chantal. They're not good. I know. Well, then do it. Honestly, guys, like... <sighs> yeah, I know. Well, then do something about it. Christ, look at the state of you. That's really hard. <laughs> Well, go and get some help for it if you can't do it on that your own. Older cats can be very whiny. Mm. <clears throat> Why? Like, she'll just sit here and whine at me. Yeah. For, like, ever. Why? Well, I'm not being horrible, and I mean this. <sighs> Since it, sweetheart, perhaps you should go to the vets with her. Because, you know, older cats, I mean, my Mr. Pickles... He's the oldest cat I've ever owned and he was nearly 17. And I really do think that he'd begun to get a little bit of dementia. Because, you know, animals, they get the same ailments as us, don't they? And sometimes I used to catch him, you know, staring at the wall and things like that, you know, as if he was in a bit of a daze. A bit like you are now. And he used to cry a lot and talk a lot. And I really do think he had a little touch of anxiety 
I think sometimes he went out. He used to go in the garden. He never went out of the garden. He'd have a little mooch about, you know, a little sniff of his bush, and uh, he'd come back in. And sometimes he looked a bit confused, like he didn't know where he was. So perhaps you should pop the pus to the vets, just just to see what the vet says about it. I mean, I don't know if there's anything they can give to 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 animals for that sort of thing. I don't know if there's much they can give to human beings, but at least you'd know, you know. My sweetest angel. You know what I mean? So, I had my door closed because I don't want pizza. No, you don't want him smelling your bacon. He might come in here and try and nibble on it. Cheeky devil. Let him get his own. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming back to bed. Because I'm going to be cleaning it up later anyways. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Did you get that number? She's losing her shit. You would have got BBJ. <laughs> BBJ. BBJ is fine. I just have to go and cuddle with her in bed right now. Right. She's losing her shit. I wish you'd lose all your shit in a big skip and then take it all to the landfill. Um, so guys, I mean, when I asked him about it to clarify from, because when we texted you. What are we on about now? I, I'm, I'm losing my track. Are we on about fellas again? Oh, I thought you'd already had your, sh your sausages for this morning. Here with the, he can use the translator. He says that they're separated and they don't have sex. Oh, all would... right, so she's on about now. I get it. I'm with it now. I found my stroke. Lost it for a minute there. She's on about some chat because, of course, the conversation always leads to all, to, to our fellas with uh, our foodie. And um, she's on about that chap. I think, isn't, is it Tony? I don't know. There's that bloody many of them. She's like bleeding Argos catalogue when it comes to fellas. And apparently this chap is married. Yeah. Just living together for the kids is basically... Right. Is that what he told what you? What he basically said. That's what uh -huh. I understand from what he says. Right. But... But there again, they tell you what you, you want to hear, don't they? And you're very quick to listen to the narrative that you want to hear. You're very much a cherry picker, aren't you? With the truth. Oh, he's probably lying. He's you probably... know he's bloody lying. You can see through that bullshit. You're 38 years old and you act daft, but you're not daft. Far from it. He's lying or he might be lying. I don't know. You do. You do know. You're willing <sighs> to go along Canada. with it. And she won't be in Canada for another few years. Moonlike. Well, that makes it all all right then, doesn't it? So. That makes it all okay. The fact that it doesn't matter if she's on another bloody planet. She's his wife. Even if they have had a breakdown in their relationship, it don't, it's neither here nor there. She's his wife. He's got children. And he's messing with you. And I do like him. I mean, We know you do. Well, I mean, I'm attracted to him sexually. Mm. I like, you know what? I like having a sex life. I'm a do 38. You? And you'll get what you want despite it hurting anybody else. Why can't you have a sex life? Go and bang anything with a pulse, but make sure that nobody else is getting hurt. You know, I don't mind. If you want to be a slapper, be a slapper. Two and three a night. But make sure they're single men who don't have wives and children at home. Just be fair. You know, live your life. Have your sex life. Do what you want. Bend over backwards. Whatever. But don't hurt other people while you're getting what you want. As long as I'm safe about it, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Well, of course you don't, because you've got the morals of an alley cat. Yeah. I don't like the stigma. I think there's just a lot of stigma. Stigma? No, it's not stigma. People tell you what you don't want to hear, that you're wrong for bopping a married man and you don't want to hear that because it the truth hurts and it gets you niggly you don't want to hear it so you call it stigma shut up 
You've been on that bloody woke Twitter again. Or on someone like me. Oh, you know, here it is. I'm a bald, super obese. Mm -hmm. So what I've just said about you is been... I've said that about you because you're bald and you're morbidly obese and you have some terrible personal habits. No. You could be as beautiful as, let's say, um, Grace Kelly. You could have the figure of Beyonce. You could have the personality um, of somebody really lovely. Kate, uh, the Princess of Wales. You could have everything that a person could possibly want to be a thoroughly gorgeous person. And I'd still reprimand you for having the morals of an alley cat. It's got nothing to do with your weight, your looks, your personal habits, your positives or your negatives. Morals are morals. It doesn't matter. So that was that. I mean, she carried on a bit longer, you know. Woe is me. I just want this little group. I need this in my life. A little group of men to fulfil my needs, you know, when the urge takes me. And I can't see what the problem is with that. And you all pick on me. You know, the usual diatribe. The fact of the matter is, she can do what she wants. I don't give tuppence, ain't me. If she wants to spend the rest of her life on her back, with her legs open, I don't give tuppence apony, as long as it's safe sex and she's not spreading any diseases. What I care about is the people that get hurt because her needs are getting fulfilled. And the fellas that she's sleeping with, the married ones at any rate, are having their needs fulfilled. I care about the wives and the children and the families, you see. Because all these men, the married ones, that she thinks it's okay to go off with. Because, you see, it's them that are guilty because they're the ones who are married. But you knowingly know they're married and you're still messing with them. So, you are at fault as well. They only tell you what you want to hear. They're not telling you the truth. They're telling you their truth. I bet if you were to have five minutes or so with their wives, you'd get to see the other side of the coin. They tell you what you want to hear. I bet if you were to meet them, you'd actually probably like these women. And you'd probably go off and have a coffee and a slice of cake with them and get on with them and be friends with them. They're not quite as bad as the uh, fellas paint them. You see, being a mistress, a side chick, a bit on the side as we call it here in England, it's not all fun. It's not great. I've actually heard women say, uh, women that purposely go out with married men, I hear them say, oh, you know, we have the best of both worlds. No, you don't. You have sloppy seconds. That's what you have. You have the scraps off some other woman's uh, plate. That's what you have. Oh, I'm single and I have my own home and I have my work and I have my friends and I'm always socialising. And when I want him, I have him. No, you don't. You sit by the phone and you wait for that phone call. You miss out on trips and holidays and nights out. You cancel plans at a moment's notice with your friends, your family, people you're supposed to care about because you're waiting for that phone. You're waiting for that phone to ring and for him to tell you that he's got a spare few minutes that he can let you have. His breadcrumbs, the scraps of his wife's plate. And the fact of the matter is, you're nothing to him. You're an ego boost. He's been married for a while, he's got a couple of kids. Being an adult, being a parent, being a husband or a wife, it's hard work. Living, and it's only getting even harder, isn't it, at the minute, where everything's going up. And he's bored. And his life's not exciting, it's drudgery, to be quite honest with you. And his wife's not all over him anymore, because you see, the kids take precedent. You'd know that if you were a parent, kids come first. And all of a sudden, his wife's not buzzing around him, she's buzzing around those children. And the home that they've set up together, and worked very hard to pay for. 
So he's feeling lonely and his confidence has gone down. And then so he goes on one of these websites and he starts having little dalliances. And it's a boost to his ego, makes him feel like the man again. The whispering sweet nothings, you know, the furtive glances, the little amours quickly set up, you know, the passion, the romance of a quick one in the back of a car. Those sexy texts makes him feel young again, like a teenager. He's got no intention of leaving his wife. They very rarely do because he's comfortable at home. You see, he just wants a little bit of excitement every now and again. He's not going to leave his wife. He's worked too hard to buy the house that they live in. Mortgage is nearly paid off. He's got his kids to think of because he does love his kids. He just wants a bit of time away. He probably still, part of him, does love his wife. He's just bored by her. She doesn't excite him anymore. And I think he secretly knows he doesn't excite her anymore. The only time you'll ever get that man in your house is if she finds out. Now, some of them, some of them will put up with it because they don't want to lose their husband and they're set in their ways and they don't want to lose the house and go through the rigmarole of a divorce. But quite a lot of them do have a little bit of self-respect, a little bit of uh, integrity. So that the only time you'll ever get that fella, that prize you've been lusting after, is when his wife kicks him out and he comes running around your house. Not because he necessarily wants to be with you, but because he's got nowhere else to go and he can't bear the thought of moving back in with his parents. So he'll come and knocking on your door with his tail between his legs and his wife's boot up his arse. And as soon as he moves in with you, he'll be looking for his plan B. He'll be looking for his next mark. Or he may be trying to get back with his wife. That prize that you wanted ends up not being so much of a prize. Because you see, when he's living with you, and perhaps the wife gets in touch with you, she tracks you down, meets you outside of your work, or she rings you up, or she comes around the house perhaps, you'll get to hear her side of the story. And you'll be living with him. Not having a quick one. Not having a 35 minutes in a hotel. You'll be living with him. And you're going to realise that actually, you don't know what you saw in him. Actually, he's not quite what you thought he was. And you get to hear the wife's side. And you get to see what she's been living with for the last 20 years. That prize ends up being the booby prize. And the only one that wins is the wife. Because she takes him to the bloody cleaners. So that man with, you know, the nice car and the nice big four bedroom detached house on the executive estate. He ends up having not a pot to piss in because she's took him to the cleaners. And you realise, my God, I've got to get rid of him myself. Or he'll meet somebody else and fuck off and not tell you about it. So you were doing the dirty on his wife and now you have the dirty done on you. And off he'll go on to his next plan B. And perhaps a little while later, when you least expect it, you'll see her, his wife, his ex-wife, because they got divorced. And she may even come up to you and shake your hand and say, Do you know what? I'm not going to shout and bawl at you. I'm not going to scream. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to fight you. I'm going to shake your hand because, yes, it was a dirty thing that you did with my with my husband behind my back. But it ended up being the best thing that ever happened to me. Because I got rid of him. I got that yoke from round my neck. And my life has never been so good since I lost him. That is the fate of most mistresses. You end up getting used and abused. No matter what bullshit, no matter what denial bubble you're living in. You end up the one getting used and abused. And you end up being the one left with nothing. Something to think about. I don't want to get preachy. It's just that, you know, I've heard these stories. I've been around the block a few times, you see. I've seen it and heard it. Never done it, but I've seen it and heard it. And I've, I've been the shoulder that these women have cried on many times, too many times. Don't mess 
Oh, the people's rubbish. Their garbage, their breadcrumbs, the scraps off their plate. Never take second best. You don't deserve it. Nobody does. Goes for, go for first best. There are many men out there, single, kind, loving. They have integrity, honesty, decency. And they're just looking, they're just looking for some nice woman to start a relationship with. Don't go for the ones with the wedding rings on their fingers. It's not worth it because the fact that they're willing to go off with you sort of gives you an indication right from the start the sort of men that they are. They're not somebody with integrity, kindness, decency because they wouldn't be able to be with you behind their wife's back if they were. <laughs> I'll get off me, um, I'll get off me pedestal off the stage. I've had me say, don't mess with married people. Being a mistress, being a side chick, being a bit on the side, it's no good. It really isn't. Until I see you next time, take care of yourselves. Be good. And if you can't be good, get yourself a breakfast. See you later. Bye.